Welcome to the very last episode in this series of Fishing Gurus. My name's Dean Macy and today we're at White House, still on the River Wye, in the middle of the farmland in Herefordshire. Now, you can hear the farmer, he's going to be working all day, but I don't feel too sorry for him because I'm going to be doing a bit of fishing. Here at White House, it's got a habit of throwing up some very big fish, and by big I mean double figures. And we are sitting in what they call the going swim. But when I drove down earlier on, I saw a few swims, a little bit shallower with some streamer weed in them, which are absolutely prime territory for barbel. So I baited a few swims down there, but before I get fishing in this one, I'm gonna go and knock up some ground bait for me feeder. So I'll go and do that and we'll get some fishing done. Now on my upstream rod today, I'm gonna to be fishing a ground bait feeder and my mix couldn't be any simpler. I've got a homemade pellet ground bait here, and I say it's homemade, it's not really that special. All it is, is a mix of response pellet, halibut pellet, ellipse pellet, you name it, everything that I've got in the garage, I pretty much take into the kitchen and just blitz it up. That's gonna go in, and I'm gonna mix that 50-50. I don't wanna put too much in there, because I ain't gonna fill it in. I've already put probably 20 droppers of hemp out there. I'm gonna mix that 50-50 with this active fish mix, which I think is actually a pretty good bait, to be honest. It actually, um, explodes off the bed of the river and releases all of those flavors downstream. Now, once you've put them in there, mix them up nice and even, and that is basically it. You've got all of those flavors, very little food content in there at the moment, but hopefully over that bed of hemp, that is gonna draw them upstream. From there, we're gonna mix it up with a little bit of water. Now it's important that you use river water. Don't worry about getting the banks messy. If you're not getting the banks messy, then you're not mixing it up properly. And basically, you want to get your hands in there and really give it a right thumping. I find it helps to think about someone you don't like when you're doing this, because <laughs> then you don't fatigue quite as much. Now, what happens with this is once you've mixed it up the first time and it looks absolutely spot on, that is absolutely spot on at the moment. But what you want to do, you want to go ever so slightly damper than that, because in about 10 minutes time, it's going to dry out again in the sun and then it will actually be spot on. So that is just a little bit over damp, but like I said, in about 10 minutes time when I start fishing, that'll be absolutely perfect. And all this is gonna do, this is not gonna be the entire feeder full, this is just gonna plug the pellet that I'm gonna put in. And the pellet that I'm actually putting in to the feeder mix as well is the actual pellet that I mix the, uh, my homemade little sort of pellet ground bait up with. So same scent in that ground bait as in them pellets. And what I don't want to do is put too many in. So this is literally just a sprinkling. I want them fish to focus in on my hook bait. So when this, when this ground bait explodes out the feeder, it's mainly scent. And the only thing they're really gonna get their teeth into, not that they've got teeth, but you know what I mean, <laughs> is my hook bait. And that, let me tell you, stinks to high heaven, but it's caught me barbel everywhere I go. That will, that will be it. Oh, there we go. I think that feels like a chub. In fact, it definitely feels like a chub. I would imagine, even though it's quite deep and slow here, the barbel would rip off. Oh. There's quite a bit of streamer on the on the deck. And believe it or not, this chub has got me <laughs> behind the lump and it's starting to feel heavy. It's not a big fish, but it is my first fish of the day. Typical chub, going straight for the undergrowth. It's only tiny, but small or not on the river wire, they're all welcome. Oh, there we go. The feed had only been in a couple of minutes. And whether they're big or small on the wire, it doesn't matter. They're all prizes to savour. And a more perfect looking chub I couldn't imagine. A more lively one as well. And that's the first fish of the day. Many more to come, hopefully. Oh, there we go. Well, whatever it is, it's got me solid in the weed. There's lots of streamer in this stretch of the river, but that's what the barb will love. Streamer tends to come up over clean gravel bottoms. I don't think this is a barb, to be honest. If it is, it's very, very small. I think it's another chub. And quite often on the Y, you can just have days where the chub don't leave you alone. If I'm honest, it's 
other than the last five minutes, it's been extremely bright and hot today, so probably the worst conditions you can have for fishing in these types of river or any river. But any fish is welcome, and this is another chub. It's another small one, but where there's chub, there's barbel, and like I said, chub is one of my favorite species, and in the net you go, baby. Come on, sweetheart. Lovely jubbly. Oh, that's two down and a few more to go, hopefully. There we go, probably twice the size of the other one. Still not a big chub for the river Y, and still not a barbel, but I'm just loving getting bites. Ah. <laughs> I knew that rod would go off at some stage. <laughs> I'll talk about being in a bit of a pickle. I just put a beautiful little chub back and my left hand rod on the, uh, on the gripper, plugged with a little bit of activate paste has uh, just ripped off. I just heard the, uh, the clutch ticking over. When I'm fishing two rods, I do like to fish a little free spool reel, just so that when I'm dealing with a fish, I can click it on and I don't lose any rods. I've seen too many people lose rods. Hey, it's a barbel! <laughs> it is the smallest barbel I have ever seen. It's smaller than the chub that we've had, but oh my God, look at it. It normally is the downstream rod that goes off for the bigger fish. Um, the bigger fish in this river are the barbel, and this is a barbel, but it's far from big. <laughs> Some people might call it bait, but uh, it, it, I certainly aren't. Look, I've got my rod on the floor, my net's in a tree. I fell over when the rod went off because I lost balance. But the sport is starting to come, look at that. Grippers on the little micro lead clip, and that, woohoo. <laughs> That is absolutely, in you go, sweetheart. On the button, lovely. Well, there you go, what a palaver. I had literally just put a chub back, not much bigger than this, and this rod ripped off. Two off in the go. First barbel of the day, not a monster by any means, but look at that. I can't think of a much more perfect fish than this tiny, tiny little prince of the river. So traditionally, the middle of the day is the slowest part of the day, but Fear not, I'm joined by Adam Fisher of the Why Us Foundation. I'm gonna pick his brains about what he does for them and how I can improve my chances on the river today. So Adam, what do you do for the Why Us Foundation and how long have you been with them? Um, I'm the marketing officer at the Why Us Foundation. I've been there about 12 months. Right. Um, managing the fisheries and, and uh, looking after the Why Us passport. And talking of the fisheries, how far up the river do the, uh, do the core species go? Well, the core species are, are, are right through the Y, right. um, and they are in the Usk uh, and the tributaries as well. But the best of the coarse fishing is found um, probably below Hereford, right. um, down to Monmouth, but hey to, hey to Monmouth realistically. Right. But you, the, the, they're all good right through there. And what, what about the species that we're actually talking about? I mean, we've got pike right through to Dace, but you know, name, name all the species that we're likely to be able to catch. I think the Y is famous for its pike, as you probably well know, Dean. Definitely. Um, you know, you can come here and catch 20 pound plus pike. Well, I can't, um, but I know they do. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, the chub fishing, you've got to work hard, but rove, but there's some big chub getting into six yeah. pound. Um, and the barbel fishing, of course, you know, and on a day like this, midsummer, it's mm. what you want to be doing really, isn't it? Wait for the sun to go down and get out there and catch some barbel. Might not be massive, there's a few doubles, but um, barbel fishing's good. Yes, yeah, I've always said that. You don't come to the river wire for double figure fish. You go to mm. other places for that, but you come to the wire for the volume, the fighting capabilities and the scenery. I mean, it is absolutely stunning river. Um, with regards to um, the actual stretches and stuff like that, the ones that you control, I would assume that every stretch has pretty much got what you need for up and pushing through in the winter and low and clear in the summer and everything else in between. Yeah, exactly right, you know, the, the Y is so diverse. It's got a bit of everything. All the beats vary, yep. um, but they're all beautiful. Well, you know, any river is, isn't it? But yeah, they're, they're all stunning. Um, and they've got a bit of everything all year round. Right. Now, with regards to this one, White House, what we're actually fishing today, I've, I've got to be honest, I'm struggling, although there has been a guide on the far bank guiding, and, you know, they haven't caught anything yet, so, so our five fish is looking pretty good. But is there anything I can particularly do today to improve my chances? 
Well, I think you could only do what you did yesterday, and uh, you did all right as the day went on, didn't you, at Suggers Court? Yeah. Um, and I think that's about all you can do today. But where else would you want to be other than sat here in the sunshine waiting for the fish to come onto the feet? Absolutely feed? nowhere, mate. It is absolutely stunning. So, let's say someone does want to fish this stretch or any of the other stretches that the Wynas Foundation control. How do they go about it? Well, you can pick up our uh, Wynas passport. Right. Uh, it's free. Um, you can phone the office and order one of those, or you can pick them up in, in local establishments. Um, 150 odd pages listing all the fisheries, um, coarse fishing, game fishing, yep. winter grayling. Or you can go onto our website um, and you can book your fishing online. Right. Um, if you can't book it online, you phone the booking office and uh, we'll sort your fishing out for well, you. Well, look mate, I've been on the website and even I can work it, which means it is foolproof. And it was the best thing I ever done actually coming down here and fishing the white. It's a stunning venue and uh, let's hope that later on I can pick up one of those elusive um, doubles. Glad you enjoyed it and uh, best of luck later. Cheers mate. Well, there we go. It's been a right grueler. This fish is heading in close and there's a tree just down to my left. I apologise for the racket just upstream. The farmers decided to uh, start pumping water out the river to, I don't know, sling all over his fields. Who cares because we are bent into I don't know what it is actually. It went off like a barbel initially. And um, right now, it's feeling a bit chubby. But I'm thinking, no, it's a barbel. It's not a monster, but it's a barbel. And to add insult to injury, <laughs> we've only just come and sat in this swim and I've actually forgot my net. So the crew is running up and down the bank as we speak, trying to find my net for me. <laughs> There we go, lovely thrown at me, look, here we go. It is a barbel. Can you believe it? The story goes that we decided to sit it out in what we thought was the banker swim. Well, as it happens, the raft that we were supposed to be fishing to had moved about 100 yards downstream. And so for the first half of the day, we was actually fishing in the wrong swim, which doesn't help. <laughs> We've just been in here, it is Quarter to six, we got in here 20 past four. I've made two casts, and this is our first bite, and it's a barb. Well, it's not a monster, but it is going absolutely balmy under the rod tip. I'm having to shout because of that pump that's only about 50 yards upstream, but you know what? That is a very small thing to put up with. Oh, nearly went in then. <laughs> when you're catching fish like that, how's that? Beautiful. Well, look at that. The farmer's still pumping and we are still catching. We haven't had that double yet, but I've got to be honest with you, there's not many fish that I would actually sometimes rather catch at a small size. That is so stunning, I can't believe it. But our rigs are ever so slightly different this show to last, so let's go and have a look at them. Well, we're fishing two rods today, so the rig is actually, if possible, slightly simpler than the last show. Um, standard barbel kit, 12 foot infinity, pound and three quarter, little free spool reel, um, 10 pound drag line, and down to a micro lead clip. Now, these couldn't be simpler to fish. All you do, slide the towel rubber on, slide the actual lead clip on, with using the Palomar knot, and to be honest with you, wherever I can, I use a Palomar knot, I've got 100% confidence in it. Tie the swivel on, tie your hook link on, which in this case is about two foot of 10 pound IQ2. Um, on the two rigs, I'm actually fishing two rods, but slightly different. This rig, I'm fishing a gripper. I'm gonna plug that with a little bit of paste and I'm gonna wrap the hook bait in a little bit of paste. And on the other rod, I'm doing exactly the same. And that's a great thing about these micro leg clips. They take feeders. On the top rod, I'm gonna be fishing this feeder, plugging it with nice smelly ground bait so that the scent travels right the way downstream over this bottom rod with the gripper on. And like I said, a hook link of 10 pound IQ2, which is probably just over two foot long. And if need be, if I start getting feeder knocks, then I'll shorten that down to probably 18 inches, maybe a foot if I can. I've got a size 12 MWG on there. And for hook bait, an 11 mil really oily pellet. Now, if you want a change of hook bait, then I've got some new Grange hooker pellets all glugged up, they've been in the glug for about 48 hours and they stink to high heavens, trust me. That's a great bait if you want to be a little bit individual, but at this time of year in the summer, pellet does seem to be key. This is the second fish in the actual flyer. <laughs> Talk about getting the location completely wrong. In fairness, 
this whole stretch where we're fishing looks pretty similar. And in these conditions, oh, this feels like a better fish. In these conditions, middle of the summer, roasting hot, pulling my arm off this one, you would expect all the barbel to be downstream in the faster flowing water where the streamer weed was, but could I get a bite down there? No. Up here, for some reason, they just want to be. And these slightly steadier paced stretches tend to fish much better in the slightly colder months and when there's a bit of water on. So if we had two or three foot of flood water on right now, then this would be the swim that I would pick straight away. But in these conditions, I've got to be honest, I wouldn't have come, I wouldn't have come up here. That is definitely the best fish of the day so far. It's not a monster, but it's a good fish and it's putting up one hell of a fight. Oh dear, oh dear. I'm shaking like a leaf because we've struggled so much today. It's been a real, oh, look at that go. <laughs> It's been a real hard slog, but I've enjoyed it. I always enjoy my days up here on the River Wye, always. And I always come up for a couple of days as well. Fish a couple of different stretches. Most of the time I visit a stretch that I've been to before that I can guarantee a few bites. And then after that, I, oh, look at that. He's a good rod length and a half out and he still soaked me. The second day I come up here, I generally fish a brand new stretch. And actually the two stretches that we've fished for these shows I've never seen before in my life. And as with all fishing, if you get the location right and you keep your methods simple and put your bait in the right place, you are guaranteed to get, oh, this is really livening up. <laughs> you are guaranteed to get some action. And this is, act oh, this is proper action. Woo, these fish spawned a little while ago and so they're just getting their heads back down and they are just starting to put on the muscle and the fighting ability that we all love from them. Whew, I've just tied myself up another rook link because I wasn't sure how many more fish I could have on this one, but whew, this one's done pretty good so far. Oh dear, right, I've got to get the net out. I've thrown the net over on the side here because we're in a bit of a rush. We don't want to lose the light. Like I said, we spent half the day fishing a swim that we thought was the flyer because the, the trees on the far bank have actually been swept downstream by about a hundred yards in the floods over the winter. And as it happens, the swim downstream that looks awesome, we still had some chub and a small barbel from, which I think we've done really well catching them actually. Cool, this is really putting up a real tussle. I'm looking like a right wimp on telly, but honestly, ugh, this is quite hard. But this swim, which is almost featureless, I mean, look at the far bank. There's just a, a bare slope leading down to, to the river. But apparently there's a little bit of a depression where those trees used to be. And that's still where they are. They, oh dear, they haven't relocated. And I'm so glad they haven't. But one thing I ain't glad about is that this barbel's pulling my arm off. And surely that's it. Surely you're going to go in the net. Come on, darling. Oh, one more. In you go. No. I just can't pull any harder because my, my arm's gone. In you go, yes, yes, yes. And it actually is a bit bigger than I thought. That is a stonker. Well, look at that. Well, an absolute stonker. We've had to wade through quite a few small fish to get amongst them. Not gonna go nine pound if I'm honest, but well over eight. And I wonder, I wonder if there's some more in there just waiting for us. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I do apologise for choking on my crisps <laughs> because I just nearly lost my, my rod completely. <laughs> I don't think it's a big fish either, but uh, I just put a fish back. The feeder's only been in couple of minutes. This is by far the best time of the day, wherever you go, whatever you fish for, tench, carp, bream, chub, barbel, roach, whatever. But as the sun goes down just into dusk, it's always, always the best time. But 
my rod was just laying on the floor and I actually grabbed hold of that part there. That last black bit just there is what I just grabbed hold of to save <laughs> my rod. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. Dino, 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 that was very, very lucky. Because let me tell you, this is my favorite rod in the whole wide world. It's not bad fish either. Oh, I'll tell you what, these fish aren't doing much when they're out there, but they are kicking the you know what's out of me in here in, within a rod length of the bank. And eventually we're starting to get amongst the big ones, or bigger fish, I guess. They are very, very lean at the moment, extremely lean. And to be honest with you, they start fighting better and better the later into the summer. Summer you can go, come on, sweetheart, come on, be a TV star, because they've got a little bit more energy. But if I'm honest, I'm not sure I want them with a bit more energy than this, because my, my arm, here we go, come on, darling, come on, darling, in you go, in you go, yes, it's another good one. I don't think my arm could take a stronger fish at the moment. Awesome. Well, look at that. Well, an awesome fish to finish the show on, and indeed the series. Thank you very much to all the guests that have appeared on this series of Fishing Gurus, and more importantly, the fish. But before we go, let's have a look at some of our best and worst moments. But from me, for now, goodbye, and enjoy your fishing. But these boys, after a couple of hours' perseverance, have really come out of life.